Hello, students. I'm Roger Spitz, and I'm here to talk to you for a few moments about purpose and responsibility in the context of your business and society course. In terms of background, just as an introduction, I worked for most of my career leading a number of investment banking, M&A advisory businesses focusing on technology, and more recently launched Tech Essential, a global foresight strategy practice which helps prepare for the volatile, complex, and ambiguous world around disruption. The agenda I propose this afternoon with you is purpose and responsibility, where we will look at what that means in a, in a business and corporate context, the role of technology in solving social and environmental issues. We'll look at a few specific examples and case studies, because I think that's always interesting to do so. And not forgetting the limitations and considerations around using technology. The framework we'll use, which I think is relatively conventional, is around the 17 goals which the UN has in terms of sustainable development. I like to use the term radical transparency and traceability when we look at the ESG considerations, when we look at the environmental, social and corporate governance in the, in the broader context of purpose and responsibility. And technology in particular, as we'll see in a few moments, is a very meaningful enabler for the transparency and traceability. And that's a, a very important feature, which was not necessarily the case five or ten years ago the use of technology. So we'll take values and ethics and the social stance in, in, in the sense that it needs to be impactful. You can't anymore tick a box. It has to really have a meaningful impact to move the needle. You're looking at the changing consumer expectations whereby today there's an expectation of authenticity when uh, the leaders lead their companies, you're expected to have both the company itself and the, the leadership teams, which are authentic. When you look at the investing around ESG, and I believe you've had some, some courses and other discussions around this, you're looking to find a way of creating value, despite what might seem for certain companies, the constraints of sustainability. It's meant to be something which is very positive and which creates value for shareholders and investors as well. So you're in a world where there's no longer just one bottom line of the net results or the net profits, which the shareholders look at, but in a world where you have multiple bottom lines. And last but not least, you're looking at this across the value chain, so including supply chain and all kinds of other aspects when you look at environment and social. You would have picked up multiple news headlines in terms of what all this means for ESG. I try to broaden it and just consider it to be a world where there are multiple stakeholders. And as we mentioned a moment ago, multiple bottom lines. No longer can you just focus on one particular shareholder who owns the company and looking at the net results, the dividends, the net profit of that company. There's an expectation across a broad spectrum of different constituent stakeholders and the multiple bottom lines for each of them. I invite you to look at some of these headlines and the underlying articles. And I think if you look at, for instance, you know, the chief purpose officer, one of the big adventure travel companies is really focusing on what it means to be um, meaningful and purposeful. When you look at Airbnb, it imagines a world where you no longer have the investor day for the investors, but more broadly, it imagines a stakeholder world with all constituent stakeholders. Of course, on the investment side, the Black Rocks and the likes for their investing strategy or Microsoft and many other companies um, giving headlines in terms of when they expect to be carbon negative or neutral. So how can technology help with the SDGs? Two words which are very important to contextualize the use of technology is transparency and traceability. Because my personal view is that this is what allows the accountability for these various technologies then to be deployed and to see the impact in particular of the technologies and the initiatives. So if you take artificial intelligence, for instance, for healthcare, there are many initiatives around drug development. If you look at refugee camps today, 
many of these um, refugees on dire situation where they don't even have identification um, through AI or blockchain or, or other um, means, one's able to at least provide you know some ID, some biometrics, providing allowances for for certain purchases, etc. And then obviously on the ESG investing side, you have many areas as well as for energy efficiency where the sort of certain algorithms um, uh, can be helpful. Blockchain and cryptocurrency, I think in particular around the supply chain transparency, that's probably one of the most important areas to be able to monitor um, the source of the supply chain, make sure it's transparent enough to be able to validate whether they are complying with the right uh, initiatives. And then on space and, and communication, satellite communications, the imagery and various other technologies can be extremely helpful if you take you know, a way of monitoring whether the vessels that are fishing and fisheries in areas that they shouldn't be. If you're looking at the crops and environmental side, certain images from space, which can be very helpful um, as well. So all these technologies and many others combined can be extremely supportive of the various ESG initiatives. I wanted to, to mention Google's Startup Accelerator, which is specifically dedicated for, for SDG. And I encourage you to have a look at some of the recent articles, but they launched this accelerator. What I like about the, <clears throat> this as an example is that, well, first of all, it's, it's a case study, it's a specific companies. Second of all, because it's Google, it's, it's very technology related. And thirdly, it's a specific initiative for startups and this accelerator where they are effectively using technology as a driver, but for SDG goals. So one of the companies serviced, for instance, top left is a UK company. It's actually founded by a very good friend of mine, Iggy Bassi. And these provide personalized AI insights to look at the impact of climatic and extreme events to help certain predictions in terms of climatic volatility and, and supporting some of the, the crops and some of the environmental considerations um, around agriculture. You have some other examples, ellipsis, ever impact in France, or even solar freeze in, in Kenya around renewable energy. So I'll in invite you to have a look at those. Ellipsis in France is quite interesting. It allows you through machine learning and drone imagery combined to track some of the plastics pollutions and, and monitor those. But yes, technology does have limitations, unfortunately, even if they are for, for some of the best causes, um, it doesn't mean that they are free from, from constraints. And I think like everything, it's a balance between the advantages which the technologies can bring with the limitations which you need to be aware of and, and see what um, safeguards one can have to, to manage those appropriately. Privacy is obviously a very important one. You know, how is the data used and the risk of cyber attacks in terms of the data, how reliable it is how secure, is it compliant with the different data laws and the complexity thereof. We talked briefly about blockchain or cryptocurrency, but it requires a lot of energy. These are still unregulated. These are very new technologies. You don't necessarily have today internationally recognized standards. And then you have a, a number of unintended social implications with this. So one of the key con considerations around technology is that a lot of, in particular for machine learning and artificial intelligence, relies on data. But as Nassim Nicholas Taleb says, data means more information, but it also means more false information. So there's always going to be a tricky area with, with artificial intelligence. It doesn't mean one shouldn't use it, but one does need to be aware of that and have the right uh, safeguards and considerations around that. And in particular, I just want to draw three areas where Nassim Taleb warns us against the complexity of using data in, in complex systems and, and the dangers thereof. And once again, it, it's not to say that one should therefore not use it, but it's more a question of understanding the limita limitations and ramifications. But the first one is the rear view mirror. You basically, when you look at the data, you might confuse something that's confirmation versus what is actually the causal driver for that. So you can then build the narrative around the data, but which might be a narrative which is erroneous. Silent evidence, the second point, is that you might have missing data. So you might look at corroborations or conclusions, but that don't take into account important events because they are not in the data. They may not have been unobserved. They may not have been observed, and they might still have tremendous impact. 
And then the third piece is what, what he labels the ludic fallacy, which is platinifying, which is effectively simplifying predictive models based on a very simplistic assumption, simply because transcribing the real world is just simply too, too difficult to do. And there again, you might have certain oversimplifications or assumptions which are not representative of what actually happened and which can have a very significant impact. So that is that covers it. Thank you for, for listening. It's very happy to be able to exchange with you. And hopefully this will tie in nicely to some of the readings which have been put aside for you. Enjoy.